Chapter 46, Once Upon a Broken Heart Eventually knew Jax would be unhappy with her going through his mail, but he was asleep, and she couldn't stop. It was like drinking from the bottles of flavored water, except the only magic at play was her curiosity about Jax. The letter, sadly, did not give her any indication as to what Jax wanted from the Valerie Arch, but they did confirm that this was Jax's place of business. Most of the correspondents asked him for favors or meetings. So many people were far too eager to become in debt to him, just as she had once been. She never really thought of Jax as someone who worked exactly. His office appeared that way as well, with his disorganized bookshelves and mismatched chairs. But after spending time with him, Evangeline knew Jax was not as reckless or careless as he led people to believe. He was a calculated collector. She's seen him cash in favors from two different fates, chaos and poison, and the letters on his desk held promises of even more. It would have been easy to get derailed from her search for a book containing a love potion cure to see what sorts of things Jax took from people, and she may have briefly paused to rifle through his desk a little more. He would have undoubtedly had no comprehension about looking through her things, but all she found were some ugly coins a blue silk ribbon, some recent scandal sheets about her wedding, and, of course, apples. Then she was back to the bookshelves, haunting for a tome with a love spell antidote. Most of Jack's books were crookedly stacked in next to volumes without any apparent reason except for a small collection of the last book she had expected to find there, The Ballad of the Archer and the Fox. Something warmed inside of her at the sight of so many copies of her favorite storybook, Jack's own seven volumes, ranging from old to very old, positioned more precisely than anything else in his dean. They sat side by side, on the tip top of the shelf, the sort of place where a person stored books they didn't want anyone else touching. What was all this about? She wished Jax was awake so that she could ask him, but he hadn't moved from his position on the sofa, where his limbs were recklessly sprawled, making him look ma- unmanageable even in his sleep. Evangeline reached for the first volume. She knew she was being distracted, but all she wanted was to look at the last page and see what sort of ending the story had. She wanted to know if it had a happy ending, if the archer kissed the fox girl, or if he killed her. And maybe seeing all these books felt like a sign. She was starting to think that sometimes she imagined things were signs when they weren't. But that didn't mean they were not actual signs. She opened the first book, but the pages in the back were all ripped out. And unfortunately, she did not have better luck with any of the other volumes. Every copy fought her. One book kept falling from her hands every time she tried to open it. Another book only had blank pages at the end. Finally, she reached the seventh copy, her fingers tingling as she lifted the cover. The book opened easily, and it was a perfect example of a person finding what they needed instead of what they wanted. The Ballad of the Archer and the Fox was printed on the spine, but when Evangeline opened the book, the title page said, Recipes of the Ancient North, translated for the first time in 500 years. It was the same title as Marisol's illicit spell book. The table of contents only listed receipts, and the first few entries were all made with delicious ingredients like turnips, potatoes, and celery. But about a dozen pages later, the receipts turned to spells and potions and magic, and some of it did sound like as horrible as Lilian Jax had claimed. Evangeline furiously flipped past spells to summon hellfire and to drain a person's soul until she found one section on love. Finding love. For ending in love. For turning someone into your own true love. The first two spells weren't any helpful, but the third spell looked as if it might be useful. For turning someone into your one true love. Warning. Love spells and potions are among the most volatile and unpredictable. If you choose to proceed, please note all cautions below. You will need a vile malefic oil, hair, tears, sweat, or blood, your own and that of a person you desire most. A candle dyed the color of love that you wish for. Spoonful of sugared rose, pinch of cardamom, sprinkles of orris root powder, pure glass bowl. The substitution of other oils is not recommended. Although difficult to procure, malefic oil is the best way to ensure that your love potion will work only on the person you desire most. However, be very careful in its raw form. Malefic oil is extremely toxic.
class hair is the easiest to obtain and therefore will produce the mildest results. For the most potent outcome, blood is recommended. However, when it comes to spells involving love, this book would encourage the user of milder ingredients. Extremely potent love potions can result in dangers and highly volatile emotions. The purest red will result in a feeling closest to love. Pink will produce something more keen to mild affection. Dark purple will result in obsession and is not recommended. Combine all ingredients in bowl. Set above candle of flame. Say the name of the object of your desire seven times. Then let the flame burn through the night. To use. Once the solution is complete, use your fingers to brush the mixture against the skin of the object of your desire. Just a touch is needed. Warning. There is a cost to every spell. The intensity of love will determine the intensity of cost. With many range from rain to on your wedding day to a deeply married, healthily ever after. To undo spell. Love spells and potions rarely reverse on their own. Though the people who cast powerful ones often come to regret their choices. If you wish to undo a spell, this book recommends Serum for Troops. Receipt on page 186. Evangeline could not flip to 186 fast enough. Not only had the love potion mentioned malefic oil, it said one side effect was ruined wedding days. Mark evidence of Marisol's guilt. Evangeline might have been to blame for Marisol's first failed wedding, but Dexas warned repeatedly the wolf attack that had prevented the second attempt had never been his doing, and Evangeline was finally inclined to believe him. Lou's attack must have been the cause of Marisol's love spell. Evangeline looked once again at Jax, negligently draped across the sofa as she slept, and she wondered if there were other things she'd been wrong about as well. But there would be time to ask him later. Right now, the only thing she needed to do was brew the cure mentioned in her book. Serum for Truths Truth is often bitter, particularly when the person has been tasting more enjoyable lies. To remedy, you will need to erase the sweet taste of falsehood. Recommended ingredients. Crushed bones of the dead or charred dragon skin. An honest pinch of earth. A handful of pure water. Seven drops of blood from a magical veil. Mix all ingredients over a fire made of young kindlings for best results. Warning. There is a cost to every spell. More truths than people were often revealed. Additions effects of serum for truths are usually temporary and they may include fatigue impaired decision-making and judgment dizziness, the inability to tell a lie, and the urge to reveal any unspoken truth. Chapter 48 Once Upon a Broken Heart It was dusk when the potion was done. Jax was still sprawled across the sofa, as if he hadn't slept in years. Jax. She rocked his shoulder, but when he moved his golden head, it was only to borrow deeper into his pillow. She jostled him one more time. She thought he'd be awake by now, but maybe he needed the rest. She didn't think he'd slept at all the night, that she'd been poisoned. He must have been exhausted even before the Moslem. And be, perhaps it was better for her that he took his rest. Evangeline doubted he would be enthusiastic about her plan. She already knew he wouldn't want her to go back to Wolf Hall, and he probably wouldn't trust her for potions either. Although she was quite proud of her work. For the earth, she scraped the dirt from her boots. For the water, she'd taken snow from outside and let it melt. The crushed bones of the dead had been a little bit tricky. She hadn't discovered any skeletons inside Jack's office, but she had found a dead spider. For the blood, she contemplated borrowing a few drops from Jack's, as he was clearly more magical. But Jack's was so far from honest, evangeline watered if his magic blood might do more harm than good. She decided her blood would have to suffice. It worked well enough to undo locks. Hopefully, it would help undo spells. After that, she poured her concoction into one of the remaining bottles of Fortuna's fantastically flavored waters. Hoping the drink would be as enticing to Tibris as it had been to her. Then she wrapped the bottle up in paper. All she needed to do now was write Jax a note. Dear Jax, if you wake up and I'm not here, do not freak. Unless it's well passed on, then I may be in trouble. I think I know who the killer is. I fear it's Marisol after all. For motive, look at the scandal sheet which you've been using as poor substitute for a blanket. I've gone to Wolf Hall to save Tibris from marrying her and to hopefully clear my own name. Little Fox. Evangeline didn't know why she signed her name that way. She felt a little silly as soon as it was done, but she didn't want to waste time rewriting it. Maybe if she were very lucky, Jax would never see the note. If everything went her way, she'd get in and out of Wolf Hall before Jax even woke up. 
Evangeline almost laughed at the idea of everything going her way, but there was a chance that it would happen. She kept her plan simple. She would enter Wolfabia, the same hidden passage she snuck out through to meet Jax. Then she could leave her love potion out to the Antiris chambers, where he would be sure to find it, and with any luck, he compelled a drink. If the antidote worked, Tibis would be cured, and Marisol's duplicity would be revealed to him, as it had been to Luce. If the antidote didn't work, it would prove Marisol was innocent, but the killer would still be out there. And if Evangeline got caught delivering the antidote, then the killer would never be found, because she'd be blamed for the murder.